So we've talked about executing statements in process, but when does the process run? Like when do those statements actually get executed? And that's controlled with the sensitivity list. So the basic behavior is relatively straightforward. So anytime one of the signals in the sensitivity list changes, so then run the process body. So this allows me to specify some signals to watch, and then anytime any of those go from low to high or high to low, then we can execute the process body and then update some other signals as a result. Okay, let's play through a few examples and see how this actually works out in practice. So here we've got uh, four signals, A, B, and C are inputs, and Y is gonna be an output, and they're all just standard logic, so it's regular bits. So let me say process C. So whenever C changes, then we evaluate this statement that Y is assigned the value of A and B. Okay, so let, let's just draw this on a logic diagram, on a timing diagram here. So here's C, and let's say C starts out low, and then goes high, and then maybe goes low again. Okay, so then A and B, so A, for example, maybe starts out low, and say B starts out low as well, and then at some point they both go high. And then maybe it goes low again, and we'll leave B high. Okay, so then we wanna know what happens to Y over time here. Okay, well, so if we just hooked up an AND gate, so this, for example, if this was outside the process, with a regular continuous assignment like we've been doing up to this point, then as soon as A changes or once a, both A and B are high, then Y would be high. But because it's inside the process, we don't run this statement until C changes. Okay, so what's gonna happen is Y is gonna be low until this point when C changes and then it gets reevaluated. And now that A and B are both high, then Y goes high. And then we carry on until the next time that C changes. Again, the, the fact that B drops here before C changes doesn't matter. We're, we're ignoring B until we see a change in C and then we reevaluate this statement. Okay, so when C changes, that's over here. Then we look at A and B. And so A is high and B is low, so and of those would be low and Y is low again. You may be looking at this and wondering like, what kind of circuit could possibly implement this really bizarre behavior. And if you're thinking that, uh, just hang tight. We're gonna get to that next week. But I wanna go ahead and give you a couple of examples of ways we can use set processes and sensitivity lists with the things you already have, uh, the, tool the toolbox you already have with combinational logic and thinking about test benches. So first, if we have an empty sensitivity list, then the process is going to run as soon as it reaches the end. So with no sensitivity list, we're not waiting on any signals in order to run the process. Uh, and just syntactically, you would write this as process begin with no, um, no sensitivity list in here. Then as soon as the simulation begins, it'll start running this process. And as soon as it reaches the end of the process, it'll go right back to the beginning and run it again. Okay, so for this example, We've initialized the signal A to be zero. And so if I just draw this again on a timeline, here's the signal A, and we'll set this to be zero and one. So initially it's zero. And then at time zero, A gets the value of not A, so it's gonna go up to one. And then we're gonna wait for five nanoseconds. So we'll, five nanoseconds will pass. And then we reach the end of the process, which means we start again right at the beginning. And so A gets not A again. So that's gonna drop from one to zero. Wait for another five nanoseconds. Again, we're at the bottom of the process. We start at the beginning and we continue in this infinite loop. 
and we create a signal uh, that looks like this. So in so analog speak, we would say this is a square wave. Uh, in digital design, we're going to call this a clock signal. Um, but again, that we'll save that for next week. I just want a word about having an empty sensitivity list and doing things this way. Um, if you don't have any wait statement at all, you'll end up creating an infinite loop and the simulation time will never advance. Meaning you'll be stuck at time equals zero and you have this infinite loop. And so it's very easy to write code like that. Um, and if you, if you do this, uh, your simulation won't ever reach the end state. Um, and either it will just run forever on your computer or if you're running on VHDL web, it'll actually just kill your simulation after a few seconds of, of real time on the computer. And so you do want to always make sure that somehow you're causing time to pass if you've got a process without a sensitivity list. The other thing we might do is use this keyword all. And I should just add this is only in VHDL 2008. All of our tools support VHDL 2008, but all of them generally require some kind of flag or some kind of toggle to be set to enable that. Uh, so by default, they don't necessarily support the most recent version of um, VHDL. When you have process all, what you're telling the VHDL synthesis and simulation tools are anytime any of the variables in here change, then we want to rerun this process. Okay, so I've got um, S that could potentially influence what I do in the process. We've got A that could influence what I do in the process, and we've got B. And so anytime S or A or B change, then I want to go ahead and rerun this process. So let's just kind of work out what happens here. So if S is 1, then Y is going to have the value A, and otherwise Y is going to have the value B. And this isn't gated by any other signals, so there's there's not any other signal that's going to cause this this to run or not to run. So as soon as A changes, or as soon as B changes, or as soon as S changes, the value gets updated. So this is kind of like a multiplexer, you might think. Uh, we've got we could just go ahead and draw that, and S of course is our select that's going to choose between A or B, and Y of course is the output. Now when S is 1, we're getting A, so we're connecting A here, and then B otherwise. And then now if we think about this multiplexer, and then we look back at the code, uh, it is in fact a multiplexer, it's not just sort of like one. Um, that if B, for example, changes, then if, if S is 0, and we, we're, we've selected B, then any changes to B are immediately going to be reflected at Y. So when B is selected, any changes here will get passed through. Likewise, if A is selected, any changes to A get passed through. And then anytime S changes, we immediately update to A or B, whichever is appropriate. So what we've done, is we've taken a process and we've actually created combinational logic with this. Now, in general, I don't encourage you to do this as your sort of first line of attack. I think generally, um, processes are a bit more complex than using continuous assignments that we've talked about up to this point. But sometimes there are places where you have a very complex logical path or it's just more natural to express something using a process and if statements or case statements or even a for loop or something as opposed to using um, with select or uh, the when else constructs that you would use more typically in the continuous assignment, uh, continuous assignments in within the architecture. So one final thing, uh, again, all was introduced in VHDL 2008. We could just as easily do this instead of saying all, um, if we just said specifically that it depends on A, B, and S. And by, by putting A, B, and S, anytime A or B or S changes, we'll rerun this process. And then, so that's, this is how you would have done it prior to VHDL 2008. All is just a little more convenient because it means if you add some signal later here, um, maybe if I, I go from a two input multiplexer to a four input multiplexer and I add some more values, that I don't risk forgetting to add them here. 
right? Anytime you see process all, that guarantees that you're producing combinational logic. And so that is just a convenient shorthand and reduces the potential for error as you change your code and as your code evolves.